is finally here. The long awaited episode 7 of Murder Drones is here, and it is awesome. Now, I know this isn't my usual content, but Murder Drones is something I've been keeping a close eye on ever since it released. And this new episode, damn, is it good. So I just had to make a review about it. Um, anyway, enough rambling. Just sit back and enjoy my dumb review on Murder Drones episode 7. Anyway, um, let's go to the start of the episode. So we can see the church, was, which is actually the JC Johnson lab space, which we can see from this sign. Inside the lab space, we see humans? What? Humans in a show about drones? What the fuck? Anyway, we see the humans are running experiments on a drone that has the absolute silver, which is totally not a robot virus that can be like this for some time. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, anyway, this drone is Nori. Okay, hey, emo goth drone's mother. Yeah, no, I'd be scared as well, bro. Don't worry. So this guy, who is actually an intern, but uh, just decided to wear the wrong fucking outfit. Yeah, good one, mate. Anyway, he's sent to get another drone called Yeva. Now, who is Yeva? Well, Bo's mother, aka. Oi, ya должна была предположить, что кто-то сможет убежать через вентиляцию, используя выброшенные зеркала как ступеньки. Yeah, so the intern is sent to get Yeva. Well, this person. Uh, yeah, I still don't understand how USBs would work for drones. Um, then the guy sprints off like he's Sonic or some sh. Then goes to the lockers to find Yeva. Uh, Yeva is playing a game of Russian Tetris when the intern interrupts her. Yeah, I'd feel like that too. Anyway, they go back in and... Oh, that's how the USBs work for drones. So the guy's like, nah, I don't need a drone, and shuts Yeva out the church. Now the person who did the, uh, crucifix thing... Uh, their, their arm is kind of... Oh. It is revealed that it's all a hologram, as the absolute of one can create 8K Ultra HD RTX 4090 Ultra Ray Tracing holograms. Uh, then Nori rises from this big red hole, um, <clears throat> and takes the crucifix USB thing from the inside and straight up lobs it at him using the absolute solver. Then we get this weird FNAF game over screen static that Loki hurts my eyes. And we see something using the same thing Nori was using, but it's purple. Um, what? Why is there a crab? <clears throat> oh, okay. This is actually Nori, but it's just her heart as a weird creature thing. And we see Nori drawing X's on a map that looks like a floor plan of the entire underground mineshaft place with things like cathedral being labeled. She takes off her gamer headphones, folds up the map, and put it in, puts it in her chest. Then she picks up a pickaxe, mining helmet, and the aforementioned chest, and goes off like me trying to get iron for the first time in Minecraft. We love miners around here. Then we see some kind of CRT monitor displaying an elevator in which the floor clock goes down a lot. I wonder where else we saw an elevator falling down. R.I.P.V. Anyway, then we see N, Uzi, and Tessa taking a bit of a tumble as they enter the dimly lit mine shaft from the elevator. Uzi then coughs up oil as N looks at where the elevator fell down, looking at the rocks falling onto one another. In that moment, N gets bare pissed off because his BBG is probably dead and starts shooting the rocks to the rockets. Like, calm down, mate. We then hear N trying to get Uzi to help him using Uzi's silver powers. Which she can't do because of, well, this. I also just gotta say, N is such a wholesome boy. He's so kind and supportive towards Uzi. But then, Tessa, the bitch she is, says, quote, We will save V after we finish this. No, don't kill the main character, bro. She's got plot armor anyway, she wouldn't be able to. Tessa asks Uzi to sit this one out, saying that robots like boxes. 
which if you ask me is a little sus test us after a bit more chit chat n tells uzi that they aren't gonna hurt her uzi insecure about this steps back a bit but her absolute silver reacts to the sense of insecurity and separates uzi from Tessa and N using a fucking black hole. What in the Jesus Christ? Okay, I'm not gonna commentate over this bit. It's just too good. N then gets crushed by boulders, rocks, metals, and various other dangerous solids. And then we see Thad and Lizzie walking towards the corpse house. Nice corpse house my guy anyway then we see gravity fucking invert as they lift up i can only assume this is the singularity aka the end of the world then another landing spaceship pod thing flies and lands on the corpse fire then jay actually has screen time <clears throat> jay then uses her wings to fly into the corpse fire we don't yet know what she's doing in there and I just loved that and Lizzie's reaction to this. So is that related to the thing you're looking for? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it is. We then see N waking up from being crushed, with a message being displayed on his visor. Knocked the fuck out before waking up. As he calls for Uzi, we see N's arm is stuck. Ouch. As he only has one choice. To sew his own, own arm off. But before that, he hears a faint giggle that sounds like V's giggle, and looks up to see... V? What the fuck? This is actually Sin acting like V. We then get the funniest moment by far. Ah! And it cuts to this emoji. I hate this dumbass emoji, I swear to god. If I see this one more time, I'm actually gonna fuck him. <coughs> anyway, we then see Uzi panting out of breath as she literally ran from her insecurities. Uzi then looks at a poster, which reads, Due to lack of progression in units, sans 48, Team 6 Ridley is tasked with reattempting attempting Zero 2's recovery via failsafe USB. Which is the weird crucifix thing. Back to Uzi, we see her wandering down the mineshaft when she comes across a lantern, but this dumbass skeleton is holding it. Uzi, scared, which is definitely understandable, takes the lantern from the skeleton and runs off, while still keeping an eye on the skeleton. Back to N. He's actively sawing his arm off as Sin, disguised as V, approaches him with this goofy ah, movement animation, and then hears something that makes him stop. You always surprise me. Then Sin pulls N out of the rock, separating him from his arm entirely. Then Sin pulls N in for a hug, as a flashback is shown. I used this clip for the intro, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play the whole thing. After that, the flashback glitches out and N's visor displays a message reading Access denied. Contact admin darkxwall17 Which, if you don't know, is Uzi's user tag from episode 5. Sin then drags N away, screaming. In the next scene, we then see stalactites? Or is it stalagmites? Stalactites. St stalactites rumbling due to gravity probably inverting. As And we see Uzi, ready to go inside the church building. As she looks at her necklace her mother wore, Uzi then flies towards the church, then opens the door. She then climbs onto the roof for some reason, uh, and then hops to this chandelier thingy. As she looks to this big red hole in the ground. I don't know if Glitch wanted to intentionally foreshadow something, but it's just really cool. That, uh, Uzi then looks at the screen Nori was using, and I'm really surprised Uzi didn't freak out when she heard the random nightcore music and saw pink gamer headphones. Anyway, she kicks the plushie from the chair to sit down, and then she presses play. Uzi then starts realizing the events that went down in this cathedral. 
and is then being dragged by Sin as we see him try and laser the weird tentacle thing off of him, but it doesn't work. He then tries to catch onto something with his claws, which also doesn't work, as he is pulled deeper into the fleshy caves. But then, out of nowhere, Nori throws a pickaxe at the worm, cutting it and freeing N. Nori then throws the crucifix at N, then asks why Sin was after her own murder pair, which we basically figure out in episode 5, by the way. Uh, while this chase scene is happening, we hear Nori talk about getting the crucifix to Khan, which is his dad, by the way. Nori then throws N to the side, and then asks, How do you know my daughter? Cut back to Lizzie and Thad. They're prepared to fight whoever's in the corpse house. But then, it just fucking explodes, and launches them back. I'm assuming Jay is trying to destroy any chance of anyone leaving Copper Nine. As she is in on Sin's plan, even if not seeming like it in episode 6. Now Khan is here, actually being useful and grabbing Uzi's zero gun. And this bit is just so funny. My daughter having interest beyond cannibalism and Nightcore? Oh yeah, then gravity inverts again, and Khan thinks the planet is gonna go bye-bye soon, according to Nori's closet. Now we see Tessa looking through the old test subject's lockers. Then she walks over to the computer where it asks her for a fingerprint. I also just find it really funny because when it's successful, it says, you right. Then Tessa goes through the, f through the full list of, su of subjects. Then just, um, just makes it go. Which is big fun. Tessa stands proud of what she just did. Then Dole appears behind her, asking about the crucifix USB thing. She then says something that makes her that makes her even more sus. My suspicions? Thought they kept cutting my feet. <sighs> then Dole says the thing Tessa cut her is helpful to stop it using her to destroy the fucking planet. Much like what is happening with Uzi. Tessa then fucking disappears and all the lights go out. This is just FNAF at this point. Then Dole hits footsteps. They then get louder and faster. Seeming like they're approaching her. Then Dole struck a throws a rock in front of her to protect her. But this entity cut the cuts the rock in half as Dole gets jump scared. See? It's literally FNAF. Then it cuts back to the rest of the flashback we saw, but this time the full story is revealed. We see that the intern did not die, but his visor just cracked. Therefore his feet stopped. But we see Yeva save the intern and throw it back. Heavy! Throw it back! And Nori. Literally shattering her face. Then Nori throws the crucifix into the big red hole as the intern runs off. Again, like he's sonic. Yeva then tries to help Nori, but her hand is kind of trying to make a black hole. Yeva has no choice but to chop Nori's hand off, throwing it into the hole. And we finally see what caused the collapse of Copper Nine's core. And we see Nori telling N this story, explaining that all the humans are dead in the best way possible. This is so funny to me, I don't know why. Nori then explains to N that the solver is back and asks N who the host is. N pauses and realizes the answer. It cuts to Uzi. And the timing of this is just way too perfect, by the way. Uzi then has a very relatable look. Then Uzi's solver puts out all the light, all the lighting in the room as we see a shadow of Dole enter the room. Uzi then takes off her mom's necklace that is used to control the solver powers while shaking. Dole then slips over. Man, they really should have put a wet floor, floor sign there. And Dole's visor displays a message reading, Fight back. And well, they just killed enough an important character. Then Tessa roundly shows up and thinks that Uzi did this to Dole. Back to N. Nori then frees N, removing the pickaxe, and then excitedly runs to get Uzi and tell her her mum is still alive. Subsequently, Nori stops N using the silver and the pickaxe, telling him that if he tells Uzi, he'll die. Sorry, ma'am. I won't keep secrets from Uzi anymore. Even if you say it might hurt her. Before Nori removes the pickaxe from his neck once more, then Nori says she caused every horror in Uzi's life. Destroyed the planet, 
got you things sick to here. And then says about Nori giving Uzi Aldrich and Essex, referring to the absolute silver. Which makes Nori mad, causing her to fucking push N's head into the cave floor. Uzi's into some deep shit. Tessa thinks Uzi killed Doll, however she... Um, she got the FNAF treatment. Tessa then trips up Uzi, causing her to fall. Tessa then cuts Uzi's silver wing before stabbing into Uzi's core, ready to deal the final blow, and then shows up, threatening Tessa. Tessa then, then tries giving small talk, which doesn't work, and her head rolls away like a fucking bowling ball, and then helps up Uzi. However, Uzi squeezes N N's hand, Sin then possesses Uzi, destroying their only way of curing the silver. Well, fuck. Anyway, Uzi, uh, wait, no, Sin, throws N into a pillar, then stabbing him, making him unable to move. Sin then tries to stab N, which doesn't work because of Nori, who saves N. And I love this bit, so I'm just gonna play it out. Nori, you're dead. You're freaking grounded. Angry. Then this sick ass fight plays, and I'm not gonna commentate over a fight scene. That would be absolutely criminal of me. And definitely not a reason for me not to edit 10 minutes of footage. <clears throat> I'm just gonna play it out. Enjoy. This bit too is interesting, as it shows Nori throwing the same pickaxe from before at Uzi. But N, then realizing that Sin wants this to happen for some reason, N then goes and saves Uzi from the pickaxe, taking the hit instead, chopping N's arms off. In this moment, we see Uzi's eyes glitch from yellow to purple and then back to yellow again. This is Uzi trying to fight against Sin for control. Uzi then grabs Nori and full on punts her into the stained glass window. We then see N trying to distract the sin possessed Uzi from eating Nori by stating the fact that they hang out. I have some idea on what he means, but uh, I won't say anything yet. Anyway, we see that Nori turns to the possessed Uzi and slaps her across the face, stating that N's kind killed her. And during the slap, we see Uzi's eyes glitch out, reacting to the slap and turning from yellow to purple before being shot down to the ground. After that, we can see Uzi fighting Sin for her body, wanting to regain control. Uzi then kicks Nori into the hole, saying she doesn't own her when she actually does. And then tells Uzi that that was her mum that she just lobbed into the fucking endless pit. They both scream and then hug it out. We then see Tessa's head still rolling like a bowling ball, and right as it's about to roll into the big red hole, we see something stop it and pick it up, putting it on its head. See, I told you Tessa was sus. Tessa, or whatever this is, throws a space, space suit off, and drags those corpse away, and then starts eating our core. Mate, what the actual fuck? And Uzi look at each other, surprised at the noises they just heard. They then look to this weird thing. Wait. Oh right, this is actually Sin wearing Tether's skin. Haha, <laughs> skin. Sin then says this. Get snuck upon. It then starts crawling over to Uzi and N, pouncing at N. Uzi then tries to use her solar powers, but Sin stabs her with again a weird eldritch claw thing. And then says that it's been fun, and that was sarcasm. While also saying she's starving. Uzi reaches for N as a huge fucking laser emits into the sky. Then we see a landing pod. Then Jay actually has screen time again. As she is the sound of a bus and then gets hit by one. And his name is John C And the landing pod keys fall down. Then we see Lizzie and Thad being badass as always. 
as we see Khan just sitting on top of the bus. Dylan gets a warning on our left eye that calls out episode one because of the railgun and yeah. Uzi then tries waking N up, but he's not waking up. Then the tentacles start pulling N and Uzi into the massive hole. As they get closer and closer to death, Uzi grabs onto a bone, saving N and herself while still holding N's hand. N then wakes up and looks to Uzi. The tentacles pull them harder. Uzi then says, And N, knowing what Uzi is going to do, isn't too happy with this idea. Uzi then pulls herself from the side, jumps and throws the falling land book keys at N while having the message, die mad, on her visor while launching N out of the cathedral and allows the tentacles to drag her down. Wow, that was an anticlimactic scene. Uzi is now falling down the pit. That really does seem endless. A few seconds later, we see Uzi is waking up in fucking space as we see copper nine is blown up either this is copper nine or this is earth i'm 99 percent sure it's copper nine though as it's not a black hole like the one we saw in episode six on earth and that's it the credits roll thank you so much for watching now if you're asking why this video took five months to make I've been busy doing other things, like making Firewatch multiplayer. And also, consider this video as a thank you to Murder Drones for being my favorite indie animation series on YouTube. Thank you, Murder Drones. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye! Get rich.